Let's join Prophet Kubis now as we listen to this powerful teaching straight from the heart of God. As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Now I just want to start off by saying the days of Noah has got three to four different things about the days of Noah. It is not just a flood. There were other things that happened too. So we're going to look at some of them during the course of these meetings. For just as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, men marrying and women being given in marriage, until the very day when Noah went into the ark. And they did not know or understand until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. At that time, two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. As in the days of Noah, they, the disobedient ones, did not understand and they, the disobedient ones, were all swept away. So in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, there will be two in the field. Now that is very important to know that they were in the field. One was taken, one left. Watch therefore, give strict attention, be cautious and active, for you do not know in what kind of a day, whether a near or a remote one, your Lord is coming. But understand this, had the householder know in what part of the night, whether in a night or in a morning, Watch, the thief was coming. He would have watched and would have allowed, not have allowed his house to be undermined and broken into. You also must be ready, therefore, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful, the thoughtful, and the wise servant, whom his master has put in charge of his household, to give to the others the food and the supplies at the proper time. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is that servant whom the master, when he comes, will find so doing. I solemnly declare to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And an hour of which he is not aware. And will punish him. And put him with the pretenders. There will be weeping and grinding of teeth. He says, as in the days of Noah. The disobedient ones were all swept away. So who was left behind? And who was swept away? The unrighteous, the disobedient, the unbelievers. Who stayed behind and inherited the earth? Noah and his family. And who was gone? The sinners. So the Bible says, so will it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Two will be in the field. In other words, they are servants. One will be taken and one will be left. Two will be grinding at the mill, so they are working. One will be taken and one left. So, who will be taken? So, blessed is that servant who is busy when his master come. He will set him over the work. So, he will leave him in the field. And he will leave the other one at the mill. And those that are not busy will be taken out. And put out, and there will be gnashing of teeth and crying and weeping. So in 2000, all the computers were supposed to go and stand still at the clock at 12 o'clock at night. Not one computer stood still. So we didn't hear of these people anymore, and Jesus didn't come. So uh, he's talking to us about something else. And so we don't want to put fear in the hearts of people. We want to put the word right. The Bible says, as in the days of Noah, the disobedient ones 
were swept away. And who were left behind? Noah and his family. So in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, two will be in the field, one will be taken, one left. Two at the grinding mill, one will be taken, one left. I'm not even going into the Greek. It will shock you even more. I'm just doing English. So he said, blessed is the servant who is busy. He will be left to be more busy. It's there, the next verse. Blessed is that faithful servant who his master finds busy when he comes. He will leave him. And he will take the wicked one out of the way so that the righteous can do more and better work. Two will be at the grinding mill. Blessed is the one who's busy at the mill. He will be left to be more busy still. But the one that is not busy, he, the unfaithful one, will be taken out of the way. He says, but there's two comings. One was near and one was far. And if they knew in which hour the master would come, because he would come like a thief, they would have watched over their belongings. Because he would be coming at a time when they did not expect him. 90% of all this that I'm talking about is not futuristic. It was when Jesus came and was born in a stable in Bethlehem. And he came to the house of Israel. And they didn't expect him at that time. So he came unto his own, John 1 verse 11. And his own received him not. So over and over again, Jesus says, the Son of Man must be delivered up and rejected. All the parables of the bridegroom, the wedding, and the marriage, all that was fulfilled when Jesus came. John the Baptist, they came to him and said, are you not jealous because Jesus is now baptizing more people than you? He said, no. The friend of the bridegroom is happy now that the bridegroom is here in your Bible. He says, so I've got to decrease so that he can increase. I'm just the friend that carries the ring. So I'm just introducing the bridegroom is here. Okay? So they were foolish people and they were wise people. There's, they were those that knew he was coming and expected him like Simeon and Anna. Can I, can I go to number 16? Okay, the people of God were on their way to the promised land and three people stood up against Moses verse 27 so they got away from around the tents of Korah Dathan and Abiram and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents with their wives and their sons and their little ones and Moses said by this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works for I do not act of my own accord if these men die the common death of all men, or if only what happens to everyone happens to them, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord causes a new thing to happen, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up, with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. As soon as he stopped speaking, the ground under the offenders split apart. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed them and their household and Korah and all his men and all their possessions. Who was taken away and who was left behind? So I can go through all the Bible. I just want to bring a truth apart. It's always the righteous that are left to occupy and to go on with the things of the Lord. God made the earth and placed men on the earth to rule on this earth. It's always the people that opposes God that is taken out of the way. Whenever somebody opposes the people of God, God took them out of the way. Let's go to Luke chapter 17. He says, verse 26, 26, As it was in the days of Noah. Does it sound like the same portion? Now jump one verse back and get the shock of your whole life. But first, he that is the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, must suffer many things and be disapproved and repudiated and rejected by this age and generation. And just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the time of the Son of Man. Look here and wake up, church. What is Jesus saying? As in the days of Noah, 
He preached for 120 years. They rejected him and did not accept his teaching. So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. He will preach and preach and they will not accept his teaching. They will reject him. People ate, they drank, they married, they were given in marriage. Right up to the day when Noah went into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Who was taken away? Them, them wicked people, them evil ones. So also it is the same as it was in, listen to this, as it was in the days of Lot. People ate, they drank, they brought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. So who was taken out of the way? The people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Who stayed behind on the earth? Lot. Thank you. That is the way it will be on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. Right, Isaiah 54. Sing, O barren one. You who did not hear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You did not travail with child, for the spiritual children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. And your Bible would say there, Galatians 4.27. So if you go to Galatians 4, 27, it says, It is written in the scriptures, Rejoice, O barren woman who has not given birth to children. Break forth into joy. So do you see, it refers to that scripture. So let's read on verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Spare not, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right hand and to the left. Your offspring will possess the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed, neither be confounded and oppressed. For you shall not be put to shame. Uh -huh. For you shall forget the shame of your youth, and you shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth. He is called. In a little burst of wrath I hid my face from you, but in a moment with age, enduring love and kindness, I will have compassion and mercy on you, says the Lord. For this is like the days of Noah to me. I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you or rebuke you. Come on. Come on. Now listen, let's just explain it. He's talking about two groups of people. He says, break forth, you barren. Now, if we go to Galatians, let's go to Galatians. Verse 24. He said, this is an allegory. The two women represent two covenants. One originated from Mount Sinai, where the law was given, and bears children for slavery. This is Hagar. Now, Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and she corresponds to and belongs in the same category with the present Jerusalem. For she is in bondage together with her children. But the Jerusalem above, the Messianic kingdom of Christ is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren woman. Verse 30 said, but what does the scripture say? Cast out and send away the slave woman and her son. For never shall the son of the slave woman be heir and share the inheritance with the son of the free. So b brethren, we are not children of a slave woman, but of the free. Who's the slave woman in this context? Israel. So he says, there's two categories, two allegories, two mountains, two Jerusalems. Two comings. Okay? So Jesus came to the house of Israel. They did not expect him to come. He came like a thief in the night. Took the kingdom away. And he said, those people that were rejected. Those people that I was wroth with. For ages. Because I only involved myself with the house of Israel. I will now turn to the other group. And in my mercy... I will now tell them to break out over all the earth. And now all nations shall be blessed. Now it's not a, a geographical group of people, an ethnic group of people. Now it's all nations. Spread out. Break out. You shall expand. You shall grow. You shall be great. So the glory of the Lord must fill the earth. The church is going to be the greatest force on earth. So God says, 
The days of Noah to me is point number one. It's more or less the same as the days of Lot and the days of Abraham. People preach there's coming problems. They did not listen. They rejected the preaching. So that because they rejected it, I'm going to take them away. Yeah. Taken. Taken. Right. But I will leave the people that believe the preaching. Amen. I will leave them to go on with the work of the Lord on the earth. Amen. So the Son of Man will come at such a time where they do not expect Him. And some people will be taken out of the way. The others will be left to go on with the work of the Lord. He says, but second point, the days of Noah is I saw that I will not get wrath again. So I say, I'm going to mix myself and tie myself to another group of people. I will call them Zion. I will call them the church. And to them, they will increase, they will grow, they will expand. Nothing will touch them, nothing will hurt them. The Bible says the Pharisees rejected him and crucified him. Not the world. He wasn't crucified by the world. He was crucified by a religious mob that didn't want to accept him as the Savior. Not even the Romans wanted to crucify him. Not even Pilate dared to crucify him. Have you ever heard this? Blessed are the meek. They shall what? Inherit the earth. So what's going to happen if the meek is gone? 1 Thessalonians. Verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Okay, so what is it that he don't want you to be ignorant in? Not the coming of the Lord. He don't want you to be ignorant concerning the dead. He says that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So don't be ignorant. You've got hope. Those that are dead are not dead. They are asleep. So they're very much alive. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. Where are they coming to? He's bringing them here. He's not taking us away. He's bringing them to us. So don't be ignorant. Those that are asleep in Christ... We're not going to meet them. They're coming to meet us. Don't be ignorant. God will bring them with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain. In other words, we're not gone. We are remaining. Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Amplified Bible. For this we declare to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, not the going away of the saints, the coming of the Lord, shall in no way proceed into His presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in Him in death. Verse 16. For the Lord Himself... Are you ready? Shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now where's the thief in the night? I'll just stop here before we go any bit further. If he comes like a thief in the night and nobody will know that he snatches the Christians out. This Bible says those who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. He will come with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. With the trumpet of God. It seems like a lot of noises. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Listen to verse 16 in the Amplified. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons. With a shout of an archangel. With a blast of the trumpet of God. And those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain. The second time he says, we remain. Come with all your house into the ark, for I have seen you to be righteous before me in this generation. The flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it was lifted above the land. 
And the waters became mighty and increased greatly upon the land, and the ark went gently floating upon the surface of the waters. And the waters prevailed so exceedingly, it was so mighty, and it filled that, filled that. Verse 21, And all flesh ceased to breathe that moved upon the earth, fowls, birds, animals, wild bees, swarming and creeping things that swarm and creep upon the land of all mankind. Everything on the dry land in whose nostrils were the breath and spirit of life died. God destroyed every living thing that was upon the face of the earth. Man and animals and the creeping things and the birds of the heavens were destroyed from the land. Only Noah remained alive and those who were with him in the ark. What happened to Noah and his family? They were lifted up so that the water can take the evil people out and then they remained. So those who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall be caught up together with them, with who? With those that's coming with him. How are they coming? With them, and they are in clouds. Okay, so Hebrews 12 says, seeing that we have so great a cloud of witnesses around us. So clouds in the Bible talks a lot about a group of people. A cloud of witnesses. A cloud received him. Jesus didn't go away in a cloud. The Bible said a cloud received him and he went in the cloud. So the previous generation's righteous people received him. How do I know it? Because they were raised from the dead. And they appeared in the streets of Jerusalem. Did they stay in the streets of Jerusalem? No, they went into the cloud. So one day Jesus is coming back and he brings that cloud with him. And we will meet him with them in the clouds. Okay, now listen to this. To meet the Lord in the air, not in heaven. That word air is simply breath. We will not die. We will meet him while we are breathing. We will not blow out our last breath. We will still meet him while we are breathing. So we will not go in. They must first get their breath back. The word caught up, you can check it out in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, means to be in a state of amazement because you're meeting the Lord. Paul says, I was caught up. I do not know if it was in the spirit or in the flesh. But I saw things that you can't explain. So caught up means, wow. Sure, and you start seeing clouds and the manifestation of those that died before that's now all of a sudden alive again. Here's my father and my mother, not in heaven, in the cloud. Nothing with heaven. And while I'm breathing, I meet him in the air. And I'm lifted up gently out of the state where fire now consumes these enemies. And they're taken out of the way, and I remain. Where do I remain? I thought we le the left behind ones are the evil ones. But here he says the left behind ones are called the remainder. Yeah. But of the times, 5.1, and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Oh, Oh, as it comes like a thief in the night. I just thought it was like a shout. <laughs> Verse 3. Come on, church. For when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. For you are the children of light and the children of day. So he cannot come unto you as a thief in the night because you're living in the light of day. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.